This is nuts. In Connecticut, as the Sun hosted Caitlin Clark and the Fever in a playoff matchup, racists showed up. Yeah, a lot of them. One man donned a red MAGA cap and wrote on a poster, Make Basketball Great Again, number 22. This photo was uploaded by sports writer Frankie De La Cretas. This was after Frankie uploaded this photo of a woman with cartoonishly long nails and a shirt that read in big white letters, Ban Nails. You know what she's doing. We all know what she's doing. Shonda Prescott Weinstein was at the game, saw Frankie's tweet, and gave more info. I had the misfortune of sharing a row with Lady Massageneur at tonight's Connecticut Sun game. Photo descriptions, a woman in a blue shirt that says band nails with long paper mocking acrylic nails that are commonly worn by black women and notably by Sun player Dijanae Carrington. Here is the woman for all to see. Take it in. As they say, she wanted to be famous. So now she is. In what world do we accept this? I mean, my question is why? Why? Why is this appropriate? Why would one do this? Why would one leave the house thinking, you know, I have a great idea? <sighs> Dijon Carrington, by the way, the bigot's target, would upload this email she received to her Instagram, uh, her Instagram story, where an anonymous coward named N.A. wrote, they hope the WNBA star gets R-worded, they included a racial slur, and wish that she was beheaded. WNBA players would weigh in. It's been a lot of nonsense. Um, I think in my 11 year career, I've, I've never experienced the, the racial comments from the Indiana Fever fan base. Um, you know, we had her face on a serious matter that happened in, in this world and it's unacceptable, honestly. And um, yeah, there, there's no place for it. And, We've been professional throughout the whole entire thing, but I, I've, I've never been called the things that I've been called on, on social media, and, and, and there's no place for it. And, and you know, basketball is headed in, in, in a great direction, but nah, we, we, don't, we don't want fans that are, are gonna degrade us and, and call us racial names. I mean, we already see what, what's happening in the world and, and what we have to deal with in that aspect. And, you know, we come to play basketball for our job and it's fun, but, we don't want to go to work every day and, and, and have social media blown up over, over things like that. It's, it's, it's uncalled for and something needs to be done, whether it's you know them checking their fans or this league checking. There's, there's no time for it anymore. Alyssa Thomas, forward for Connecticut, is tired of it. After all, it has been a long season of abuse for many players in their league. Christy Sides, head coach of the Indiana Fever also spoke on it. She said, it's a lot of hurtful, hateful speech out there that's happening and it's unacceptable. When it gets personal to me, there's no reason for it. These guys have to listen and watch. Social media is their life. That's just what they do. And they have to read and see these things constantly. And just all the stories that are made up of what people see or think they see, it is just not acceptable when it gets personal, which is exactly what the woman did at the game. It is spot on with what she did. Furthermore, Prescott Weinstein wrote, this same woman also made extremely loud, misogynistic sounding comments about how aggressive Dijanae Carrington is, which is wild, especially in a game where Carrington was a victim of what should have been a flagrant. A bit more on racist fever nail lady. A lot of fellow black women get this, but it needs to be pointed out that in this racist satire, Dijanae's nails are being conflated with Flojo and Shikari Richardson when Carrington's actual nails are comparatively short. Weinstein would add, what was running through my mind while I was sitting there during the game is how this is blackface without the paint on the face. I agree. It was intended to satire black women's embodiment. It was intended to especially attack Black, high, femi, gendy, gender norms, excuse me. It was deeply misogynistic. Connecticut Sun coach Stephanie White felt it as well. We've seen um, a lot of racism, sexism, homophobia, transphobia, 
uh, throughout the course of, of our country. Um, you know, sport is no exception, and it's unacceptable. We, I say we, because you know, I work in I work in television as well. But but, but we in the in the in the media have to do a better job of not allowing trolls in social media to become the story. And I feel like we have allowed trolls in social media to frame the narrative of what the story is. And it's unacceptable. Let's pause here. Um, I do tend to agree that we should not feed the trolls because they are in fact trolls. But I suppose my question is from an objective media person, what is the line on when we report on something and don't report on something, especially when they post it on their own social media and they are called a racial slur? When do we not report on it? And is it not a story when a player receives a message saying she wishes from the sender wishes that that player, that star player gets R worded? I mean, I mean I, it is, it is a story because the silence would be deafening if we didn't cover it, especially when the player is posting it. So I, I get where the coach Stephanie White is coming from. I also think there's a big difference here as well. If we were to follow that logic, the trolls are there in person. She was talking about the keyboard and like, I, I suppose I understand. I don't necessarily agree, but I understand. So what happens when those people who would say stuff like that behind a keyboard, then go to a game and do the nail, uh, cartoonish, uh, long nails, or when the guy in the MAGA cap says, make basketball great again. I mean, this is, bigotry in its purest form and they are taunting players they are in the crowd they are paying for seats or they got the seats but they are there in person it is a story more from white i just encourage everybody to to take a step back and think about if it's your sons or your daughters or your nieces or your or your nephews or your children for goodness sakes because if my children were being harassed like this i'm, I'm not sure what i would do but the narrative doesn't need to be controlled by by people who are just you know, on their keyboards, spewing hate and negative vitriol everywhere. The WNBA would release this statement in the wake of players, coaches, and fans sounding the alarm at more mistreatment. The WNBA is a competitive league with some of the most elite athletes in the world. While we are welcome, welcoming a growing fan base, the WNBA will not tolerate racist, derogatory, or threatening comments made about players, teams, and anyone affiliated with the league. From Weinstein once more, last night there were fans running around Mohegan Sun in effing MAGA hats. All of them Indiana fans and all of them white. They are treating these games like clan rallies. Kathy Engelbert should resign, frankly. We have covered it before on Engelbert's comments. I uh, highly recommend you check them out on demand. What I will add on to is simply this. When a commissioner is asked how you are combating racism, sexism, misogyny, hate speech, um, going after the LGBTQ plus community. And the commissioner's answer is rivalries are great. Revenue is up. They're getting better brand deals than ever. You have a huge disconnect. And that is what Weinstein is talking about and what I have spoken on as well. If you can and are willing, please become a paid member here at TYD Sports. And or go to tyt.com slash join. In addition, you can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Appreciate it. Have a great day.